Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Robert Horst from Orlando in treating a pancreas divisum. This uh, case uh, is a 60-year-old uh, female. Uh, she's had three discrete episodes of acute pancreatitis uh, beginning last year. Uh, she uh, drinks socially, uh, but is not, has no history of heavy drinking. She uh, smoked. Uh, relatively heavily until 12 years ago when she quit. There's no family history for uh, pancreatitis, and she has no, nothing uh, in terms of medications, uh, in terms of um, uh, hypertriglyceridemia, no other factors to cause the pancreatitis. She underwent an MR scan uh, locally, and that was read as consistent with pancreas divisum. Uh, and so she has been referred for uh, further evaluation here. Off camera, I did an endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, I did, there were two reasons for doing the ultrasound uh, in my view. One of them is to look for chronic pancreatitis. Uh, and um, I, I think uh, the data I think is incomplete uh, to support this. But uh, we do know that uh, people with pancreas divisum who have established chronic pancreatitis do not do as well with minor papilla sphincterotomy. Uh, secondly, uh, we also know uh, from data that people with pancreas divisum have a, a significantly higher incidence of molecular genetic abnormalities. So when I see a divisum patient, uh, I uh, do like to do endoscopic ultrasound to look to see if they have a normal pancreatic parenchyma or whether they have evidence of chronic pancreatitis. In this case, uh, this patient has a normal pancreas by EUS, uh, very uniform uh, echo architecture and no evidence of chronic pancreatitis. And the um, ultrasound showed a very small ventral pancreas and uh, uh, showed what appeared to be uh, pancreas divisum. So, so. Uh, we are going to embark now on um, trying to find and locate her minor papilla and, um, uh, and then see, uh, proceed to do a, um, a minor papilla sphincterotomy. The minor papilla was more cephalad uh, than normal. Uh, we found it. Uh, oh. We cannulated uh, with this 543 and Novogold system, uh, and I'm Unbelievable. about, about ready to do watching. the minor papilla sphincterotomy. So, <laughs> Thomas, this is my technique for doing a minor papilla sphincterotomy. I'm using a monofilament uh, sphincterotome. Uh, it happens to be the clever cut. Uh, and uh, what I do is I pull back here a little bit, I'm going to ask uh, Bevan to bow it. I want everybody to know that um, we're using the new uh, Bio 3. Uh, so this is the latest generation uh, Irby uh, generator. Uh, and uh, it will deliver, uh, I think, a more precise cut. The processor has been significantly upgraded. So we're on sphincterotomy settings. Uh, I have a little bit, uh, just a little bit more bow to the papillotome, Bevan. And then what I'm endeavoring to do, uh, Thomas, is to make sort of a little bit of a zipper cut. Uh, and so, there we go. So just a little tap and a zipper kind of a cut is what I want to try to achieve. Okay, so uh, to my view, this is an adequate sphincterotomy. And now we'll Absolutely. put in a, uh, a three French stent, and then we'll be finished. Great, Rob. Would you, would you be very offended if we uh, went on and uh, uh, just trust you that you are very much able to place a stent? <laughs> so, Thomas, the joy for me today was just seeing your face. <laughs> so, uh, now I've seen it, uh, a very good hello, and please uh, feel free to, to go on to the next uh, 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 presentation. 
On follow-up, the patient took a favorable clinical course short-term. Here you see the instruments and devices used during this case. And finally, this is Rob Horses recommended reading.